It's good to know some pharmacokinetics for the local anesthetics. Onset is primarily determined by two things, pH and concentration. Remember that the unionized form of the local anesthetic is what crosses the cell membrane. So an acidic environment is no good for local anesthetic function because all of these local anesthetics will be protonated by our acidic proton donating environment. So these ionized local anesthetics won't be able to actually get intracellular where they need to bind onto this uh, voltage-gated sodium channel. These will eventually get intracellular because they're in equilibrium with the non-ionized form. There's just proportionally less of the useful molecule of the local anesthetic when you have the acidic environment. So you have very slow onset because you need this non-ionized version to cross the cell membrane and then these ionized molecules to equilibrate again and then they'll finally get in there. So with tissue inflammation or infection, you'll have very slow onset of your local anesthetic. You actually can counter this though by using sodium bicarb and alkalinizing your local anesthetic solution. So you take the 8.4%, which is the standard sodium bicarb concentration in, uh, in a vial, one milliliter of that in 10 mils of a local anesthetic mixture, and usually you're doing this with lidocaine, not bupivacaine, because bupivacaine apparently will precipitate with sodium bicarb. But the end result of this is that you increase your pH, therefore you increase the fraction of your unionized local anesthetics, and then you'll have a relatively higher proportion of these that are already freely available to cross into the neuron and block the sodium channels. So it's sort of interesting, you can actually think about this as the pH causing a higher concentration of the effective version of the molecule. And it should make sense that if I just add twice as much local anesthetic in here, we'll have more crossing in, therefore faster onset. I want to point out something that actually confused me, and that's what happens with lipophilicity. Or hydrophobicity if you prefer to say that because in general you would think that a lipophilic molecule or hydrophobic molecule will do a very good job of crossing a lipid bilayer and therefore when you put it in or around a neuron it will quickly diffuse inside and then work intracellularly but there actually tends to be an inverse relationship because we actually use lower concentrations of the lipophilic local anesthetics. The lipophilic anesthetics are very potent. We'll talk about that in a second here. And since they're very potent, you need less of them. Therefore, you use a lower concentration. And we know that having a low concentration makes a slow onset. So lidocaine has a relatively faster onset than bupivacaine because we use it in high concentrations or relatively higher concentrations, whereas bupivacaine, which is a very lipophilic local anesthetic and would in theory diffuse quickly into a neuron, actually has relatively slower onset because we use low concentrations of it. So I just said this, but potency by far is dictated by the lipophilicity and hydrophobicity 
of the local anesthetic. This can be quantified by something called the octanol buffer partition coefficient. You take a local anesthetic, put in a mixture of the octanol and the buffer, and when a high amount of the local anesthetic dissolves in the octanol, we know that it's lipophilic, and that correlates highly with its potency. So when we put our lipophilic local anesthetic in, it does a very good job of crossing the lipid bilayer and binding to the intracellular domain of our sodium channels. This binding domain actually prefers the local anesthetics that are more lipophilic. So that's another thing that increases the potency of the lipophilic local anesthetics is they actually do a better job of binding to this specific site. Related to that is just other general structure characteristics like the right isomer tends to be more uh, potent than the left isomer for various local anesthetics. And that has to do again with just the protein binding site. To put things into perspective, bupivacaine is about four times more potent than Lido. Uh, don't confuse what I'm saying here with octanol buffer partition coefficient. I'm just meaning to say that bup is four times as strong as lidocaine. The duration of local anesthetics is again dictated by its lipophilicity. Then more of a patient or technique factor is the blood flow or perfusion to whatever area you've deposited the local anesthetic. For lipophilicity, there's a thought that maybe you're getting sort of a depot effect, so you have maybe some adipose tissue around a neuron. So you're getting your local anesthetic moving to where it's supposed to go, but then also staying nicely around there where it will eventually diffuse back out and then be available to be taken up by the cell. Or maybe how it binds intracellularly or other protein binding. The important thing is that the duration of the local anesthetic is as long as there's a sufficient dose of local anesthetic remaining inside a neuron to exert its effect. So we'll have a local anesthetic in the neuron eventually, it will leave, and depends how much blood flow there is, eventually will be taken out to the liver and metabolized. Um, or if it's an ester local anesthetic, actually just needs to enter the bloodstream to be broken down by pseudocolonesterase.